Hi everyone, SoulSilver17 here, along for as like usual. Not in the video, I don't own the picture. Alright, so. Last time we left off, basically, kind of, I want to say, um, messed with the Shinny Company, you know, met Tuxin, also basically met Junior and his two, basically, companions, got a job offer, got paid, well, by basically, you know, find, have a gang member basically get out of a sticky situation and got information out of her that led to the Shinny Company's basically illegal, illegal action. So, yeah. Also got a new weapon. <laughs> uh, good day. <laughs> Anyways, so, I um, mean, that's all caught up. Um, so, hope you guys basically enjoyed this part. This is part four, and uh, yeah. I'm basically not going to really try to pause as much because. I'm on a time schedule because of the time. It's like 3.20 in the morning. I woke up at 1 and I was like, I want to do something. And I I basically decided to like, do this at 3 something. And I was like, uh, why do I do it so late? So close to work hours. <sighs> I don't know why I do this. Anyways. So, yeah. So, as I said, we're starting off basically... After the events of me leaving the area, after the cops get there, after I saw it, we're starting off in, well, where the God of Light is. As he's just watching, he goes, <sighs> Man, I think I chose right to send this one there, the last one. I mean, all the others were, well, entertaining, but... This mortal is, in particular, basically great to watch. I, I didn't watch very much of the other ones for those 20 years I was, well, in the human world, but that 20 years due to reincarnation, though, I had to lie about that one. As he kind of has a basically grim, you know, wince of grimace of it, or, well, whatever, however you pronounce that word. Not regrets. Just... Him basically being human for so long, he kind of basically, though, misses it extremely. As then he basically notices a presence. As then he hears, Brother, what are you doing? Which basically goes, I mean, the guy of light looks at his brother and goes, like, Ah, little brother, how may I help you today? Which he basically would blink and he goes, Uh... Are you okay? You were speaking different. He goes, I'm fine, the God of Light would say. Because I'm just, well, watching a mortal I send to our world. Basically shows, basically, the screen. <laughs> Where the God of Darkness looks over, and then basically looks back, he goes, you, you put him on a dying planet. Which, basically, the God of Light would just look at him and goes, like, is the one, um... The first worlds we were made. And you basically lost your power to basically someone there, which he'll, he'll growl from his brother who's in a dragon form. He goes, We do not mention her, he will say. He goes, But look, you lost it. You were mad and furious. I understand, but this mortal I send, I, well, I'm watching over him. But the brother was about to say something, he goes, a Loophole, my good brother, a loophole. You see, we said we would not return or basically have any contact with that world. But he is not from that world. He is from a world all different, altogether. As then he basically moves his hand as multiple different screens pop up that basically would show multiple images as the God of Darkness look and basically blinks and he goes, You will went to a world with no gods. One that we basically exist in, out of it. Where we haven't even created. He goes, yes, pretty much. That is all. He, basically, the God of Darkness can see his brother smile. As in, the God of Darkness basically turns into his humanoid form. Just with the horns. As his brother. Which, basically, the God of Light raises an eye goes like, 
I'm watching this with you. I'm, well, I came here because I sensed some people's deaths and I found their, let's just say, <clears throat> goes, ah, the life of death cycle of balance. I forgot we of the God, we are, of God like power can do that. I have basically took souls from a, well, from basically this mortal's world for so long. <sighs> but, alas, they have failed me in the task I gave them. Which, basically, the god of darkness raises up eyebrow and goes, what was that? At first, it was basically to find a way to help, well, he who's called Ozpin now. Which, basically, the god of darkness, you know, would kind of just narrow his eyes. He goes, and did you send him to help him? Which, the god of light would just sigh, he goes, no, I did not. I sent him on this way just to, well, for my own ent entertainment's sake. But, to also fix our, well, mistake. At least. Which, basically, the god of darkness will just blink us. What was that? Which basically looks and says, well, the god of light will say, I have learned basically from my travels into, well, that world that not everything the gods do is justified or, well, safe or even, I would say, good. Or, as the God of Darkness would say, the mortals do not find it good, and basically we are looked at as the bad guys. In a sense. Which the God of Light would nod. Goes, and then the God of Darkness scoffs. Goes, we are creators and destroyers. We basically keep the balance. And so, as the God of Light holds up his hand and says, I know, I know. But the fact is, I've told him I've been mortal for 20 years. It should have been that way. But I told him I also was reincarnated, which <laughs> I was. A lot. Probably more than basically Ozpin at this point. So I've lived a mortal life for God knows what. I lost count after 20. Which basically goes so you I have to basically send them since the rift wasn't open and it was only open for 20 years. It made sense to basically mention that. So I sent souls into the rift for maybe a good, I'm guessing, 50 to 100 years. As he basically sounds unsure of himself. He goes, God of Light just sighs. Not like God of Darkness sighs. He goes, <sighs> Okay, so you've been immortal for 100 years. How bad could it have been? Where's the guy like literally just kind of just shows him a, everything that he's done? Which, in truth, basically, his first couple of lives he died. Easily. On the seventh one, he, he kind of started to realize how to be a human. And, and because he realized there's no magic, there's no powers there, so only his soul had power. And so, for like, for those many years of him going basically present into the timeline and then all of a sudden goes backwards into the timeline and then you know goes back into the future basically or well the present for him at that point and to basically when he met me he goes huh well you had quite an adventure brother I mean I'm the youngest I should be one cause of mischief and chaos not you because I did not cause any mischief and chaos I just lived a normal life, died basically at certain points in time, and basically get reincarnated somehow. It's like two or five months later. <sighs> at least I did not possess people. Which the God of Darkness just shrugs at that. He goes, anyways. What did you basically do for this mortal anyway, since your others had, well, as I can tell, no magic? Just a semblance. Which... Basically, he just blinks. He goes, as the God of Darkness goes, Of course I know about your others. I sensed them, basically, and saw them in the death 
well, reincarnation cycle. It's not hard to tell since they weren't from our world, but yet they still get reincarnated and been a part of it afterwards since they were already dead. Figure as much. He was alright, okay, I got I understand. Well, for this one I well, had to give him magic since he was adamant on it. Unlike the others, he knew more about this world than they did, and well I was very careful to select which person. Since I may or may not have <clears throat> gave an idea do you or such? Which basically the guard runner just points to was like, You! I'm not even gonna question you at this point. Anyways. He goes, Yes? Power, semblance, magic. He goes, Ah, yes. I basically gave him the, well, the powers of what his semblance called God Eater. Which then the God Runner's looks and goes, Wait, you're talking about God Eater? The one that you have artificial orco cells implanted into somebody? That God Eater? That anime? Slash game? Which, basically, the older bird, which is the God of Light, says, uh, yes? How do you know of that? He was God of Darkness. All of humanity's thoughts and ideas, blah, blah, blah. You know, what we're best known for. I know about this stuff. Which basically. The light, the brother of light was about to say something. But he says. True. I forgot about that all these years. Which he goes. Okay. So you gave him that. What else? Oh. You ever heard of the black light virus? Which the, somehow he can tell the his little brother. The God, of, well, the God of darkness has a smile on his face. He goes. Oh. Black light virus. <laughs> Do tell, he was, well, normally it would have been basically biomass, only basically, get basically, well, biomass from living things, and basically get memories from them too, and such, and, well, be able to spread, and cause massive amount of destruction. Well, and then the God of Darkness says, but there's a button there. He goes, uh-huh. He wanted to be fully made of magic. So technically he could eat anything, or consume anything, which, the, the guard artist basically just takes a thought and says, Did you replace the oracle cells? He goes, yes. With what? As he narrowed. Because he kind of, you know, had to rethink of this. He goes, eh, basically God of Light says, he wanted to become a half brim. Which he blinks, and he goes, he, he chose to become a grim? Half grim, and... He's fully magic. He has twice as much basically damage from dust and or basically magic itself. Or anything that can use basically dust and properties actually. Huh. He basically chose something that would basically hinder him yet still, well, keep him strong. Club Immortal. And so the God of Darkness just sighs and be like, So you're telling me you gave him the God Eater, which probably allows him to have strength, basically, creature than the humans, and able to wield weapons, correct? It was, well, telling that God Eater does give him that, of his semblance, but it also allows him to, cool, well, create weapons from materials, which combined with Grimm's, should be easy enough to create said weapons from the game or any of his other creations that he could think of. Okay. Then you combine it with the Blacklight virus, or the prototype, which I, assuming that you know about, he goes, of course, I've been watching, basically, animes, and know with great power comes great responsibility, due to the movies I watch, too, that interest me, and plus, I also play the games. What have you been thinking I've been doing for my past 100 or 20 years, reincarnation cycles? <sighs> I mean, again, I mean, I basically took a vacation day, so to speak. <laughs> Which he's like, huh? It was, what? God of the Creations had to take some sort of vacation for, like, a bit. It hasn't been that long since I've been gone. Like, maybe two days? 
right, brother? What she's like, he just blinks. He goes, uh, I can't believe you're actually all right. I, the time dilation, isn't it? He goes, uh huh. Just like in other worlds of traveling, kind of amazing, don't you think? In which, basically, the god, you know, the god darkness just says, you know, I would hate you if you did not understand that so well. But, what of the mortal? Well, you're using it for entertainment, and you also basically probably said the whole entire spiel saying needed my help to him, well, need his help and all that, and basically to fix whatever mistakes that we made. He goes, the mistake part was not a lie. All the way, at least. Still believe, basically, she deserved that punishment. But, I also believe, or realize, that since there was no one there for her, and, well, Ozpin failed in his regards, she she must have needed someone to keep her in line. <sighs> because of, I've let my, basically, let's just say, idea came to someone, and he might have made, said, he goes, oh, so you re had a basically immortal in that world to make this world, but the, what we don't know is the future. He goes, eh, partially, I knew what was going to happen, but I thought, eh, I want to throw a monkey wrench into the whole entire, basically, it story, at least. Which he goes, so you chose a mortal, like this. He goes, eh, multiple times over, but this one is preferable. I actually can agree with my decision on this one for once. Which the god owner just sighs. He goes, okay, so, mortal, monkey wrench. Told him Mason need help. Told the half truth to him. Mostly for entertainment. He goes, uh huh. And also to see if he can change the future, so to speak. But, as the guy light actually has a, basically a smile that. Somehow makes the god well, the god donors actually not gain a chill down his spine, but have a sigh of look. He goes, but I believe he basically erased his existence, already changed the future in some way or form, to the where there's only two outcomes. I do not know for sure, but maybe basically the one of the artifacts I created, the relics. Hmm, Jill would know better. She may, she may not know all, but with some divine intervention and such, and grant her maybe ability to see someone into the future, she could tell someone, or, well, see if my hunch is correct. Even we do not know that, brother, right? As he looks over to God Darkness when he says that. Where's the God Darkness smile as he goes, <laughs> Oh, my older brother, you truly changed. This is, well, I would say we are gods, we should not stoop to this level, but for a dying world such as this, this is getting back my interest in it. Now let us watch what this child is doing, which, at, before the god of darkness looks at the, well, the screen, the god of says, oh, he's just puking. He goes, what? Why? He killed about maybe 50 to 6, well, maybe 60 to 70 people. And then the basically God of Darkness smiles and he goes, <laughs> Oh, I'm going to enjoy watching him. Because God of Darkness, the more people I kill, the stronger he gets and all that. So yeah. Which the God of Light basically rolls his eyes says, Of course you would. So yeah, they basically watching the screen now and seeing me puking. As after I'm done, I'm basically, you know, he's kind of basically stumble back a bit, hit the wall and slide down. I'm like, uh, uh, why did I have to remember what I did? Uh, oh, uh, huh? Uh, can't really see in the dark, but as before I can even say anything, golden light happens where my throat was, it just all disappears. I'm like, huh. Oh, seems like the god of light's still watching over me. I wonder why he did that, which... Even the dark, you know, well, God of Darkness one and there's a says, <sighs> he is a half grim. He cannot, and he probably figures as much for himself. But I wanted to find out in a more dangerous situation. 
And also, I have a feeling something will happen. Call it a gut feeling of a mortal. Supposedly. Which, basically, the God of Darkness just nods. So, anyways. That, you know, as they watched forward, I was like, I would say, uh, man, killing those guys really didn't do, really didn't do well. Probably have, I probably am gonna have sleepless nights anyways. But, I don't really need to sleep much, but when I do, uh, man, it's gonna cut down my sleep. As I slowly again up. And I just say, well, I did it to myself. I should be appalled by it, which I am, but uh, I had to do it. But still, though, so I, say I start like shivering because I would say I consumed them, basically. Is this how Alex Mercer basically felt? And how Simmons from the second guy in the protagonist? I can never remember his name right. Eh, whatever. Pro prototype 2 protagonist, I would... You know, felt... Well, Mercer didn't... Didn't feel nothing at first, I think. Or... He did feel something, but... Uh, he totally was the virus. Me, I'm still human. It's, sort of. I mean, I'm a grim that's basically magic. Uh, and I basically am stronger, too. Well... I gotta get going. I should probably also call Junior and at least ask him when can I come by for my pay. Plus, my papers are gonna be done. So, basically, I basically kind of think when I take up my phone, goes, I should probably lay low. Uh, gotta have to try to find some food. That's basically, you know, I call up Junior. Basically, I laid low for a week. During that week, Nothing really much happened. Just the news basically showing about the, well, people that was at the docks that worked for the Schnee company. Just, you know, are saying that they were basically not working for them and such. And they were, you know, stealing their boat. You know, trying to sweep it under the rug. But some evidence are showing otherwise, which, well, why his father is trying to basically get that, you know, all that under the rug, which... I'm basically smirking while I'm basically seeing the news while walking by. I think to myself, ha <laughs> oh, you stupid weak will. You basically only rely on money and basically status. Well, maybe I should cause some more havoc for you. As I really basically just think of that, because, no offense, I don't like Weiss's father at all. And after kind of researching him a bit, yeah. So, I kind of basically would just want to cause some trouble for the Schnee company. Anyways, you know, walked away from that area. I basically would probably have, like, the only interesting thing is this. I kept on seeing, basically, two, basically, groups. One group was watching, the other group was basically cleaning one day. And I would say, basically, it's during some random, basically, clean area. And basically, I'm like, huh, are those, are they from Beacon? And a rapid faunus, watching them? Plus, well, that guy's huge with the huge sword, basically. In which I would hear someone says, huh, so... Why do you basically think my friend there is huge? Which, I would look over and I would somehow basically oh, just realize I didn't notice someone was near me. As I would clearly be a little bit shocked. And when I basically look over, I'm like, well, I mean, it's wherever he eats that made him huge like that. So, what well, basically, you know, I get so tall. Which basically she would you know, smirk. She basically says, "Train right, eat right, you know. All the works of becoming a huntsman." And she smirks at me again, and I'm like, 
I just basically look at her and blink. I'm like, so what's with basically the beret classes and, well, you know. She goes, Huntress, third year. Went to, going to basically, as I'm like, ah, uh, yes, Beacon. Must be great being a Huntress and all that. Fight the Grimms. Yada, yada, yada. I would just roll my eyes when saying that. She goes, oh, have you seen anything wrong with being a Huntress? Or Huntsman? Or you just find that whole entire thing unappealing? Which I just say, well, I would just have a dry chuckle, I would think, or... Well, there's a chuckle. I was saying, well, Miss Huntress, I mean, of course, well, it's dangerous and the pay could relatively be good, but I don't, well, let's just say I have some trust issues. Besides, I would probably think if I became a, well, Huntsman, I would just run into too many, basically, people that would irritate me, or basically I would just try to basically get, well, try to get a date with. As basically I just <laughs> somehow have a basically a smirk also on my face. She goes, so you would flirt with girls? She goes, no. Get to know them and then get asked out and then probably get slapped or rejected. Yes. I don't flirt. Never knew how to flirt. So, what do I call you? She goes, huh? Your name? She goes, coffee. Yours? I kind of think about it. I'm just thinking of... Hmm. Well, it's, a, it's another word for basically this. Black. She, goes, she just blinks. She goes, huh? Another word for it? Yeah. I guess... How should I say this? Right, without getting you, well, weirded out. I guess try to look up something with an old language here called Japanese. She just blinks. She, you know, look at me. You know, kind of like, hmm, I don't know if there was. And he goes, eh, next time I see you, I'll tell you then. See you later, coffee. Also, if you kept on smirking, I'm, I may have basically said something that I would get slapped for. So, yeah. May want to not try to tease anyone. If you're going to try to. I mean, don't know if you did or not, but still. Gets the wrong signals. I think basically when I walk away, she will just look at me and basically just be like, shocked, and then basically get a little bit angry. She's about to grab something and throw, but when she looks up, I'm already gone. She's like, ah, stupid idiot. Like, why would I run foot with just some random stranger? Which, please, I just think the one funniest thing is when, just when basically, imagine basically somehow this. Somehow, basically, paper's flown, you know, like flying through the air, and then she just, like, wonders why she catches it. And I don't know why, but basically. I could just, you know, she could just receive saying, Oh, by the way, have fun with Team Ruby, Miss Leader of Coffee. Which, but, yeah, I just say pronounce coffee, but, you know, coffee, whatever. Which, I think that's when just, like, kind of gets, like, a little shocked and eyes widen. I, she's, like, looking around. <laughs> Meanwhile, me. On top of a building, again. Just, like, you kind of basically a little bit of a way, just, well, not. Well, right, crossword says she doesn't even notice, which I'm just smirking. I'm like, I love cause panic. So, right before, basically, she even, you know, she just basically looks, I put on the hood. And basically, I well, have my eyes go a little bit red, as I would think I'd be able to control it now, since it be only when I'm angry, but the more magic I gain, the more, you know, control I have over my forms. Or, well, form. As I just think she would just see someone on top of a building... And with the hood on and basically a little glowing, you know, coming from it, just like to leave. She was like, what the? <sighs> this is a, this is irritating. So yeah, so basically when I left, I got a call from Junior saying everything's ready. So 
we'll kind of skip to that to basically go then to, well, Ozpin and Glinda. Basically perspective. As Glinda says, Professor Ozpin, yes, the situation is... But she goes, I know, I know, Glinda. The fact that we did not know or the police did not know of the situation happening must, well, means many things. <sighs> Vale citizens don't like Faunus as much as basically anyone else due to the White Fang's, well, actions. But some of them were way more civil than the others. But now... This may, this may basically show some light on why the Faunus hate us so much. But still, the Schnee Company, I basically do not think basically he would be, you know, do this. Well, she would not, you know, Glinda would not says, but Miss Weiss Schnee's father did this. How could he basically do this without even thinking of the consequences? Which Osborne says, easy. Power and greed. That is all he has. He has greed for more power. And money. But this individual as basically pulls up. Basically the image of. What they described as. You know basically. As. Glinda will see the picture of. Just a rough sketch of what the. Well. What the people said I looked like. Which basically she was. Yes. This same individual who. Basically broke in the Signal Academy. Is he doing vigilante work or something? Which Osman says, I don't know, but he's already caused ruckus, basically, for the Schnee Company. And Weiss's father basically would not tolerate this. He, he may do something drastic where we may have to intervene and try to save this, well, individual. And find out more info on him. <sighs> I just hope. Just hope that basically this one would not be in any trouble. Well, anymore at least. If so, then. Uh, I believe basically this school year will maybe a little difficult, don't you think? As he looks at Glenda as he then takes his, you know, tea or coffee and just drinks it. As Glenda would nod and understand. So, we basically then go back over to when I arrived at the club, or, well, the restaurant at that point, and I'm in basically Junior's office. Every time I, so, Junior, everything worked out fine? You know, any troubles, complications, anything I need to worry about that would trace back to me? Which, basically, Junior just narrowed his eyes and just, Size and hands and basically, basically ID, basically documents, everything that basically that would give me information and such. Which he says, no, everything was alright. My associates were willing to help me after I said, well, about this weird kid. They didn't understand it until, as my eyes when I goes, video footage, huh? Which he goes, which he smirks, he goes, yeah. He goes, you're lucky. He goes, huh? But I found out before we, well, you helped me. And all, or well, afterwards, like now, I would have, well, killed you by now. The fact is you're telling me this, saying you're not too dumb enough to do it. Which he goes, of course I'm not. You are someone that, well... Can't basically be as then he shows the video of what it did to some guy, well, some of the guys at the old games members' home. Well, not home, headquarters, but give me a minute, I have to do something real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Anyways, so basically, as I was saying, you know, game home, but game hideout. As I'm just sighing, like, well, I figured that guy probably had a video of such. Well, actually, I should have figured. Video camera that was recording. Oh, well. So, that's the reason why you're not telling no one? It was that, and also, well, since 
basically there's no information on you which shouldn't be impossible which I just signed like a story for another day basically junior which he just sighs like yeah here though which basically I just catch I'm like huh a wallet and credit card he just figures you didn't have one keep that for your also ID also your scroll basically I see you can't sign a paper but if you scan basically this code basically on the paper should basically give you a to the app that would basically access your account that will also have a digital version of your credit card. Well, not credit card, bank card, I mean. Uh, forgive a credit card and bank card, two different things. <laughs> uh, which, that's also what I got as a card. Which I'm just looking at it and I'm looking at him. Look at my bank card and basically my phone was like, thanks. I'll do that. So I immediately do it right away and, uh, you know, get everything, you know, accessed it right away and such, and basically is all the paper. So, I would say, money was there. He goes, yep. Basically, it doubled from 22000 How much? Eh. Maybe even gone up to forty two, but since it was the, the Schneek Company... It tripled. I'm like, how much? Sixty three thousand and seven hundred and seventy two dollars. And as he looks at the number he goes, Ah oh, yes, and basically sixty two cents. I'm like, huh. Uh um Amazing, right? Was, yeah. Uh, I'll be back in then this week. I'm still laying low. You know, don't want to cause any trouble. Let's see if you'll see if you have another job for me by then. And all. So, Junior would nod. He goes, uh, Just stay out of trouble, kid. Seriously. Seems like basically back at Atlas. Uh, Mr. Schnee's basically making a full on fuss about it. Which I just have, you know, have a, like, grin on my face. I'm like, oh, really? Well, I am happy about that. As I walk away, as he just thinks, crazy kid. <sighs> so, after that, I basically leave and, well, go back to Tuxin's place. Tuxin's bookstore. As basically when I arrive, he's at the counter. He goes, Hello! I'm like, Ah, Tuxin, old friend. Miss me? He's like, Um, hi. What are you here for? He goes, Well, clearly I'm here for things. So, as basically I go for basically the, well, Fiction, well, basically the truth about, well, not the truth, but the history of the world and basically the other kingdoms and such. And basically further on, basically the huntsman's duties, dust, and a whole lot of basically things I need to know. Including the maps. Which, basically, I just, just like, basically, let's just say this. There's like one stack of books, another stack of books, a couple maps... He said the different, you know, places and such, and, uh, well, basically probably just, I'm, I'm basically shocked Tuxin, I'm like, how much for all of this? Which, he basically, I'm gonna add it all up, he goes, this is, uh, well, basically if I count, like, basically four stacks of books of a stack is probably, like, six to seven each so basically that much in each one plus the maps are probably like five dollars each so books probably like depends on which one's like eight to maybe ten to twenty dollars you know so i say roughly maybe two hundred or well in between well, 150 to 250 
So I was at like 210. Which, I'm like, okay. As basically I reach into my, basically, pocket. Pull out basically a whole stack of money. Drop it on the table. Like, and there's your generous tip. In there. Which, he's like, uh, huh? So he basically looks at it, basically looks at basically a hun- like all hundreds of Len. Which is like th- 32,000 yen. As I say, he looks at me just like having like all the books technically absorbed and such as quick little dip into the mindscape where my, well, where it is known as the random junk area of my mindscape is, well, or just, well, holding area is basically where all the books are. I just, and basically now basically areas of maps, and I just nod and approve, like, nod and basically approve affirmation, and I'm like, good. Because this thing, you know, is only like a second outside. I'm like, well, thanks for all that. He was, you, uh, oh, and Tux? Can I call you Tux? He's like, uh, um, like, which he basically says, I, I guess, he goes, okay, Tux. Here's the thing. I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning. He goes, it's going to be a cryptid one, slash, not really one, I guess. This is my first ever doing one. So work with me. He's like, okay. He goes, look out for one of Emerald and Mercury. Those are ones of Jewel and of Liquid that will, well, one day meet. Choose your choices, right? Maybe. You'll see another day. If not, a watery grave suits you. As basically he just blinks, he goes, Hopefully, basically, you, you'll catch it on quick. By the way, if you're gonna try to leave the white thing, leave it before the vinyl festival. Okay? Okay, see so ya. Yeah, just walking out. And then I bump it. Well, when I turn around and such, I'm about to, you know, basically get to the door. All of a sudden it opens up and I see black haired. I think it's yellow eyes. Yeah, give me a minute. Let me double check. Okay. And basically, you know, black hair, black bow, and amber eyes wearing a William Black outfit with looks like basically a weapon on her back. And I'm like, uh. Sorry about that. She basically is looking up and just blank She goes, it's no problem. Um, were you leaving? Or was I interrupting something? I'm like, oh no, just conclude my business here. And such. Well, see ya, Tux. Oh, so, uh, Miss... She goes, Blake. Blake Belladonna. You? Yami. Yami Oni. Nice to meet you. Hold up my hand. Basically, she will shake it. She goes, I, well, I never met people around here before, but I feel you're new to town. Well, new to basically this place. I'm like, yeah, you can say that. Anyways, nice to meet you, Blake, and uh, sorry for the, well, being your way and such, and uh, making you basically tell me your name since we clearly don't know each other. She would just blink at me and go and just, you know, kind of look at me a little bit, well, curious slash confused. She goes, it's no problem. As I'm like, anyways, see ya. As basically when I leave and such, Blake looks at Tuxin, Tuxin just says, don't mind him, he's, he's relatively good. I think. She was relatively good. He was, it's a complicated story so far. So, meanwhile, the god of light and darkness. The god of light has a smirk on his face, which the god of darkness is like, Huh? Brother, why do you have that smirk? He was, oh, no reason. Just something I said I would do to him. Since he, uh, well, has, uh, 
I had such a sad, sad, lonely life. I wanted to basically, well, give him something, since he is going to be in this world, and he turned himself into what he is now. Just watch. As then all of a sudden my scroll starts to rain, I'm like, there's only two numbers I have on my phone. The God of Light and Junior. I told you I, would never t I won't take anything until you know, the end of the week. So, see who it is. It's the God of Light as I answer. I'm like, hello there, God of Light. How you doing? He goes, good, good. But I don't even call it up to see how you're doing. Like, well, since that you're technically watching over me and all. What do you think? He's like, oh, you caught me. So, is she your girlfriend? And I'm like, what? Just completely out of shock. He was like, yeah, the girl you met. He was like, I just met her. He's like, so, she's a girl and a friend. What are you thinking? Oh, you're thinking of the whole entire, you're getting a hair of no matter what. Right? He's like, ah. I nearly forgot about that. You're like, well, I did it. So, yes, I did mean it as that. I, like, as I said, kind of like, I just met her. I have not recently. And besides, she's how old and how old am I? Physically, but also mentally different. He's like, he, he just basically waves off. He goes like, it's like in that one anime when the kid, when basically an older guy got reincarnated as a kid. His mind will progress back into a teenager. Luckily for you, though, it means no difference. He's like, uh, what was that supposed to mean? He goes, well, your mind was, your mind grew with knowledge and such, but your opinions and thoughts never really changed. Kind of ironic, don't you think? He's like, uh, is anyways, well, I want to say this. You really are quite lucky to meet potentially one person that could basically in your life relationship wise I'm like I am not going to do that he goes why he goes because he goes because what he basically like he's somehow to tell he's smiling I'm like because from what I remember from the Ruby series Well, it gets with someone that you know very well that's on Team Ruby. I figure everyone has watched this by this point, so I don't consider it a spoiler, but if so, then sorry. I should have said it. But anyways. Uh, hold up. I gotta wake up my dad. Give him a minute. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Anyways. So. Like I was saying. Basically, God of Light. You know. Kind of basically just smirks. It was like, I mean, of course I know. I mean, you know, I'm definitely the God of Light. Blah, 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 blah. But doesn't mean I'm all knowing, boy. So, uh. Okay, so. If you know, then why are you trying to do this? He goes, entertainment. Generally so simple, and also, I mean, you do deserve, at least, someone in your life. Which I just say, can't help it, or well, cannot happen since I am a monster. In a sense, he was. <sighs> but then I kind of basically just kind of remember what he says, he, of course he knows it. Which I'm like, you basically had a Ruby created in my world, didn't you? He goes, well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Anyways... You still can get that harem, you know. Have fun knowing that. As basically, before he... Well, after he hangs up, I'm like... This ain't no stupid harem anime. Well, damn that stupid. Ugh. I am not basically based on protagonist in a harem anime. And then I always I hear basically my, my scroll come back on for the call. And it, it says this. Well, not... It says this. The guy of life says this. Yes, you are. Well, at least now you are. I'm like, this is not an anime anime. Like, legit, just, you know, just yelling that. And then basically, I see he's not there. I just sigh, look up. I'm like, troublesome God. 
troublesome god, basically. I just walk away while putting scroll in my pocket. I was lucky there was no one around here in that conversation, but basically just Blake looking outside and just thinking, um, oh, that was weird. Kind of weird that my teammates, or partner, so yeah, she basically just go back to look for a book. Now, though, I would say after that little incident, it would be like a Saturday. Sorry, I was stretching. Yeah, it would be like a Saturday, and, um, well, I think this will happen. So, that Saturday, I call up, basically, Junior, I'm like, hey, Junior, got anything for me? Which, basically, Junior says, I was actually just going to call you. I had some contacts telling me about some some type of weird grim on this way to basically, well, here to Beacon. Or, coming towards Beacon. It's weird. It's a weird type of grim. I never more. But, I don't know what type of it is. Which I'm like, alright, I'll come down, I'll come over for the details. So, when I'm on the way, we are going to go to the God of Light and Darkness. As the God of Darkness just smirks and is, the other brother of light. The other brother says, So, brother, what did you do? He goes, Eh, nothing much. Just may or may not have, well, connected myself to that world. Well, at least a grim that I could connect to. I believe she basically could, you know, could technically control or at least have eyes through certain grims. Like the Nevermores, only when they're weaker. Which basically the brother of light would not saying there is a possibility. But we do not know for sure yet. He goes, yeah. Anyways, I found a Nevermore that was relatively strong. Give the boy a challenge. And to see what he's made of. Also, after basically he, well, kills it. I want to see basically what happens if... If or how he basically consumes what happens afterwards, the God of Light would kind of narrow its well, the, well his eyes at his brother, but leave it go. So when I get to Junior, Junior's pacing in his office. I'm like, "Hey, boss, uh, everything all right?" He goes, "Look," as he basically shows a picture of a weird Nevermore. It has more bones on his feathers than it normally would, and well, more bones on his body. Well, basically more bone, blah, bone armor or such. And there's some weird lines going on its side. Which I'm like, yeah, that's, uh, that's a weird grim. What type of class do you think it is? He goes, don't know. Never seen something like this before. <sighs> think you can handle it? Which I'm basically just blinking. I'm like, yeah. It's been hard for me to go back into basically and kill some Ursaras, but yeah, I think I can handle it. And basically, I'm thinking though, I do have some time before I can try to kill that other Ursara in the Red Forest. Hmm. Maybe. Huh. Maybe I can get my basically hammer fist then, but what can you get from this Grim? Besides the ability to have wings. Eh, I'll find out later. So, like, yeah, I'll take on this Grim. It was good. <sighs> basically, someone basically was nearly killed by it. Contact, well, contacted my associate, and he told me about they're willing to pay a good sum of money. The only know is basically the feathers aren't always basically just regular feathers. They're also bones. And they have some type of weird element on it. Or something. They don't really know. Which I'm like, huh. Alright. I'll be careful. Goes good. But basically, though, you would say, but man, get any confirmation on, you know, when you kill it. It's like, right, right. Don't worry. Will a feather do? A bone one? 
he, what did you say? Or the mask. I'm like, I think a feather would do. Which he just looks at me, he goes, mask. I'm like, got it, got it, got it. As I put up both my hands. As I just leave. Well, before I, after I leave the office, he just thinks in three, two. I'm like, where's it coming from and what location? Basically, you know, he basically would text me it and then basically tell me to, well, follow. In that, well, be in that general area because that's the pathway it's coming from. Because I would nod. And so, when I get there and such, I don't have to wait long. The creature's nearly, the, well, it's actually nearly on the top of me. Though, when basically I look up after I hear basically the sound of it, I'm like, Okay, that's a, oh, um, man, that's a big Nevermore. As I just then hear this, you know, basically the Nevermore sound as it tries to dive at me. As I dodge roll out, you know, to the left, basically I'm like, and it wants to kill me. Immediately, basically, activating, well, my, basically, magic and get the claws. Because, I want to try to get used to them. Even though I've been, I have basically been using them probably a lot. So, it basically tries to attack me. I try to, like, cut right through it. The Nevermore's armor, well, basically, armor plating. Basically, because I was trying to cut down the wing, but it's relatively too strong for my claws to cut through. I scratched them and let some dents in it, but I can't, you know, go right through them. I'm like, really wish I had the hammer fist. Right about now. And so, it basically, you know, you know basically turn around and fly at me. And I basically have my normal arms. I just suddenly run to a tree. Just rip it out and throw it. It hits no more in the face. As then I just... Would... Sorry, stretch it again. <clears throat> Trying to get my body... I guess, unstiffened because of sleep. Yeah. Just had a random stretch moment. Anyways, as I say, just get out basically... My... You know, God Devourer... What? Well, basically, get my weapon, God Devour. So, as I basically try to strike you, because it's in, in its God Arc form, as, yeah, no, it, it it doesn't do shit. It doesn't do shit to it. It just bounces off, and I'm like, come on! Because I was aiming for, basically, the part of the wing that would hold all the feathers in, as I didn't realize at first that it had also bone, like, bone plated on it. And that's what I'm saying, oh, come on for so, what was next is very simple. Because obviously I you know stagger and jump back a bit, it basically gains more altitude and then launches its feathers at me. Basically, I'm dodging some of them, pull out the shield, blocking most of them. Is after I'm done, all of a sudden I just you know smirk when I look up. Yeah, this is when the weird thing happens. Bone like feathers hit me from the heart. Stomach, side of my stomach area, and they all have weird looking, basically glowing effect on them. As I'm thinking, what the? As then all of a sudden I feel a burst of energy goes into me. As then I cough up basically globs. Well, it looks like globs of blood to me. I don't notice right away what, you know, what's going on. But I then you know, hear like a sizzling sound as it's basically where basically the blood drops fell. They start turning to black mist. As I'm thinking, just like Grim. I guess my... Any fluids I have that's in me aren't always normal. But... I... Make a lot of pain. <laughs> and... This is just pissing me off. Because... Yeah, if I'm feeling pain, this means there's only two things. One, this thing has magic. Or two... Grim's can hurt me. Or, no, actually, not, then I kind of realize a third option. Somehow this thing had, had something I didn't realize. But, then that basically, that idea angers me. Then it, I basically get angry at myself, and then I basically, you know, hate the fact that it's like, 
I was too reckless and then, well, I feel this unbridled, basically, rage inside of me well up and I don't think it, wait, what the, what's, as I somewhat lose, basically, let's just say, I lose traces of myself. As my eyes start glowing bright red, my hair turns white, my skin complexion turns basically ashen white, I guess, or ash color white, as then basically black veins come around my eyes. But my, my, the white part of my eyes is still the same, as I'm basically pulling myself out of the fetters and basically grunting in pain as when I do, then nevermore. I can basically somehow basically hear a squawking in panic, as it's like it. I don't understand why, as that's when basically I'm still holding on to my weapon, God Devourer. I just say, I'm going to rip you to shreds. As I look at the Nermore, and basically I'm sending a tense glare at it, and that's when it basically kind of backs up in the air. As I can feel basically a primal instinct telling me to rip and tear this sand part and, well, anything around me. As I get up, my body's reacting to my basically rage as it seems like my whole entire body's pulsing with power because of those like black, black tendril veins coming around me. Basically, as I just start running towards the Nevermore, leaving cracks in the ground, jump up. And immediately my weapon turns into a scythe. You know, crow scythe, well, sword scythe weapon gun. But in this case, you know how basically I had the fuck, but well not, not, you know, had basically the freaking weapon of just a great sword. Basically something like panels come, you know, well, basically it extended a bit, leaving basically that room there. Yeah, all of a sudden I start hearing these clicking sounds. Because we all know crows basically has like gaps in between basically, you know, in between the blades and such. So imagine basically those basically did, did, was not there as they appear. As then all of a sudden basically all that energy I was having poured, you know, coming off of me, pours into the weapon, travels through. And then all of a sudden basically through those basically gaps, energy starts coming out of it and it's red as I say this. Let's de clip. Well, let's de win ya. Yeah, basically, let's de you know de win ya. Basically, as I sliced right through its wing, and immediately I grabbed onto it and absorbed that wing. It's as well when I do, I immediately start making basically the feather wing, basically, of the basically of a god arc, well, blade for the god arc mode, and what happens is. The basically creatures, you know, will be, will be falling down, and such, and, well, when it does, I basically, you had it finished, I just look at it, basically, I don't, I'm not gonna put up the, you know, pull up the game and find the name of it, but, you know, I'll, I'll probably say it later, because I'm probably making part, like, five of this, what if, later, but anyways, yeah, as I just see it, and I see, basically, the b bone, Basically, platings of the wing and such on it. Basically, the feathers too, co covered in it. As I'm like thinking to myself, kill it, kill it, kill it. You know, because Emily, it seems like basically I'm losing basically myself a little bit into the instincts of a grim. I'm slowly realizing as I hear a squawking. As well, I then basically he see basically all of a sudden. It starts to have this weird pulse of energy coming off of well, not energy, but lights coming off of it. As then a new wing's formed, but it looks slightly different as it flies upwards. I'm like, oh no you don't! As I throw the blade, basically. As it hits it in its back, squawk as it stumbles a bit, jumps up to it. All of a sudden, though I can't reach it, but flinged out my left arm. All of a sudden, something comes out of it. And every time it's a webbing, because I basically made it like a fist, and I grab onto that webbing, pull myself up. Because I kind of realized this my magic kind of worked in effect. As I grab this, the blade, whip it out. As 
Then I basically make a slash on its back as it squats, tries to barrel roll me. I'm still holding on to it, basically with the blade and such. I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's see what how you can handle this. As I put my hand down, as even if I basically I'm losing myself to somehow, you know, the animal instincts, I'm fighting it. Well, the grim instincts. I'm fighting against it. Basically, start focus energy into my hand out of for some reason I'm doing it as I start try to yell out something you know well I yell out basically well something that first comes in my mind as Bell from the Manchi or is it around the pickup girls in a dungeon anime where he tries to yell at fireballs I just yell that out out of instinct for some reason as I try nothing happens just a you know sparks as I'm still basically being trying to thrown off as I yelled out again Basically, as it's not working, as then I basically yell out it again louder and basically put more will into it. Focus. As then all of a sudden, bang. Sends it down, basically no more down, you know, downwards while I'm upwards, ripping off the plane and such. And I basically just, you know, fully coming back into consciousness, and not listen to the grim instincts, and I yell out, FIREBOLT! And such. As then basically a huge, not huge, but a bolt of basically fire shoots out of my hand and hits in the back. And then all of a sudden, like, the God Devourer turns into a scythe. And basically, the Grim basically hits the ground, looking up as all of a sudden the scythe starts to change. It is like the blade, you know, pointing downwards, no magic there, but it sees my red eyes. As then, all of a sudden, it sees a head coming out of my weapon. As it looks like this weird creature with four different eyes. Two yellow, two, bl- two red. And with teeth basically looking down at it, ready to munch. As I basically, for some reason, some cheesy line my friend says, as, as a phrase I could say sometimes, pops into my head. As then, I smirk and I says, It's time to devour! And I just... Plunge down, you know, basically th- thrusting basically the weapon as all of a sudden I see basically the, well, the head of the, basically, that comes off my blade or out of my weapon all of a sudden climbs down on the Nevermore's head. As basically then, <laughs> I land on my feet as the scythe turns back to normal. As then I look, I basically feel a little bit of rush of in- well rush of energy going through me but and but the weapon seems a little bit more different now as there's a new attachment in the circle part the Nevermore's head mask basically as I'm just thinking <laughs> well that's pretty good but man I lost myself there I was losing myself there for a minute but so look at the Nevermore's body as it starts to basically looks like it's about to fade saying I need basically something so, hope, mm, sorry, but I would say hopefully this will heal me. As I basically then shove my hand into his body and I start to consume it. And, well, after I basically finished it up, I'm like, now then, let's get back to and show Junior as all of a sudden basically pain shot throughout my body. I'm on the, basically on my hands and knees as I... Basically, one word about about to say something, and all of a sudden I cover my mouth, and then all of a sudden I start puking out. Well, this black and red sl- like sludge, I just started misting right away. I'm like, what the? What's going on? And is that my is that my blood? <laughs> so it's not basically a liquid. So sludge like as I basically start coughing now. Hold up, that dog is barking like crazy. Damn. Anyways. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm basically then, like, you know, after I, you know, start coughing, blood still coming up off of, out of my mouth as I just go on the side as I basically start, you know, thinking, thinking anything that could happen. The only thing that could affect me like this is dust in a big or small quantity of it as I'm basically, you know, Thinking this is because I did double the damage from it. Well, now, 
based on what I kind of realized, basically, what could this, you know, what could have happened by saying, but the Nevermore doesn't have dust in it, right? It, it could, as in, I just, eyes widen, I'm saying, the blue streak on its body, that was dust. It, it's been eaten, crystallized dust? That, that should be impossible, that, as they basically start coughing again, but like, coming out, I'm like, grab, I ingested it, I, I need, I need to go to a tree, I need to do something, as I start trying to crawl, basically, just so I can get to it, as, when, before I even get to a tree, something comes out of the bushes, and basically, I'm thinking, crap, another, as, well, it could be another animal, or grim, as, then, it is an animal, but, it's a wounded animal, as I see my eyes, why I see, basically, that's fox, Basically have these claw marks and basically, you know, puncture wounds on its body as basically it comes over. It's, you know, but it sees me and it starts growling. It basically, I look at it. It also sees me and blood's off, you know, coming off of my, well, coming out of my mouth as it knows I'm wounded. So, basically, it, you know, starts growling, comes over and sits. And I'm like, <laughs> so, you're wounded too, huh? It. As it looks and you know, whimpers, I'm like, eh, well, I just need something to help me kick up my regeneration. I should be fine. But you, you're, you're not. Huh. So it's looking at me like, it, you know, it doesn't want to die, it just, you know, wants to live. I'm saying, I can't help you. You know, basically, you know, kind of, re- you know, the res, well, not resolution, but the reality comes into its eyes as it looks basically very upset. I'm like, when I look at, it, you know, basically the cats just start petting it, I'm like, hey, fair, isn't it? Which it would just, you know, doesn't do nothing. I'm just petting it. I'm like, as I you know, st- do start coughing, let my, you know, none of the blood get near it. I'm like, I look at it, and then I basically look at the tree, but then look at these little fox. Teenage Fox Kit, I'm like, since you're going to go, pass on. I just kind of smile, goes, how about basically you could live, well, still live on, but I, well, for me at least. It basically looks at me saying, I have, as, for some reason, all of a sudden while I'm pan its head, I, the strange energy comes off of it, and I kind of realize my entire body is made of magic, and what I did was a magic spell. And now what I'm doing, well, basically I can also kind of see all, well, what the kit's been through. Parents were kit, well, parents and, you know, it basically, well, parents and the kit were, well, yeah, parents, Fox, and the kit were basically, at about, he lost, you know, his parents at basically the age of 10. You know, the kit basically, well, the Fox kit basically was, you know, on its own for a while, then it kind of got in a fight for a predator for t- for food. Predator basically beat it, and now it's basically dying. And the fox basically kind of saw what I well, kind of understood basically what I am through basically knowledge of memories and such, and understanding the language and such. Now as it looks and just nods and knowing it will die, but yet still live on through someone. As I'm like, I just saw your. Yeah, I pulled the fox up to basically give it a hug. I'm like, I'm sorry for for everything that you had to live through, but it, like you can rest now. As it basically closes its eyes, as then, well, quick claw for the heart and basically consume it, and well, weird transformation happened and such. Basically. Let's just say this. Hold up. Okay, as I was saying, some weird transformation I did. As, basically, when I open up my eyes, well, for a bit, then I close them again and, well, focus on basically the remaining, and it, well, remaining basically, well, the dust that's in my body as having all basically whatever magic I have to eat away at the dust as quickly as possible so I, I'm not in much pain. As when I do that, it's kind of like I basically see basically the dust all of a sudden, you know, starts being eaten away and turned to more magic. 
being consumed, and then we produce more of it. And then when I open up my eyes, I kind of see I'm, a, uh, well, I'm a little bit lower to the ground. And since I'm getting up, basically, I'm basically, you know, trying to stand up, but I can't. I look down, and I see fox paws. I look to my, I look behind me, and I move my body, well, at least something I feel heavy on this back of me, and I see a fox tail. And then I think to myself, I transform into a fox. Wait, I might pro have ability to trans you know, transformation of shape shifting. I forgot about that. Now let's see. Do put one paw forward, one paw forward. Try to basically just go for a walking. It's a little bit difficult at first. So after about I want to say an hour of just trying to walk back to the city, and I'm able to walk, and then I start you know running on all four. Well, I start you know running as. Well, it takes me longer, but technically since I'm a fox, and at least I'm still in my pro, I still have my prototype magic and everything else, it's been to me quickly. It's way more faster than I thought. I'm like, thinking to myself, oh my god, I'm moving fast. Wait, if I had two tails, then I could basically call myself Tails. And I shake my head and go, no, stop trying to make references. Eh. Or try to make, you know, something as a reference here. Just because you're a fox does not mean you need a second tail. We don't need to become a kid soon here. As, you know, I ran back into basically the city where basically Beacon is and, uh, well. When I get there and such, I, I mean, some some people are just seeing like a, I'm going to say black and white. You know, white where the tail is. Well, not black, I mean orange and white basically. Maybe a little bit black there. Just like something like streaking by and such as, uh, do you go back to Junior's place? And, well... I turned back to normal, and I'm, like, shaking my head, I'm like, Okay, that was weird. <laughs> Being a fox. Try it again, though. Definitely will. So, I basically go up, and it's probably was, like, afternoon, when I basically got the whole entire, you know, grim Nevermore, basically. As I would kind of basically, though, while I'm walking on autopilot, Mindscape and such, as I see two things happening. One... The grim parts, basically, they're being well individually basically put away. Well, maybe the armor plated and such. The grim mass is a part of the site, but I see basically the double barrel shotgun, basically batons, were deconstructed. I see basically it. I'm like, huh? As then I basically see all the same magic that I know, little particles start going into it. As then also the batons basically start to you know have electrified the end of it. I'm like. So replace aura or dust with magic. Still works then. Cool. But I see the Nevermore wings. As now basically they are basically look like they're not there no more because no of the feathers. But then magic starts to go over it and such and well, constructs into basically wings for me. I'm like, so I got wings now. Huh. I don't know how I should feel about that. But cool, I can fly. So yeah, it just you know, come out of my mindscape when I get to Junior's office. I knock on the door. He says, "Come in." So I go in, and Junior is basically goes, huh, "Took you long enough." Well, sort of. I was almost about to basically have the club open. I'm like, yeah. He goes, "Was it done?" He goes, "Yes, it is." And where's the mask? He goes, "Uh, that's the thing. Bring out God Devourer." Which Junior's about to say something, but. All of a sudden, I change it to the scythe as the mass is there. He can know by the, basically the markings of the mass because in the picture there were some markings of wounds on it. Well, basically, you know, slash marks on it as the mass does have that in the exact same area. So he goes, uh, he goes, and my god, my my weapon can basically change into a gun, too. I do have other weapons that I can change into, but as basically gauntlets do appear on my. Oh, Around my wrist, on my forearm, basically. And as he was, those look like that Blondie's gauntlet. So goes, slight difference. Three claws come out. He was, uh, he was, yeah. I had many things, things I could have done, but wanted to use basically Gun Devourer. Tried to basically get used to my other, basically, part of my semblance, and, well, it didn't work out. Killed it by somehow using energy from my very own body. Must, he was, huh. Or of that. Or something. He goes, yeah. Something. 
I would just tell him. He goes, anyways, confirmed killed. Well, let me just take a picture of the mask, at least. He takes a picture of it, sends it to basically who offered it, and they basically send a text and goes, like, they're happy about it. Now, well, unfortunately, they didn't know who I was going to send, so they sent a message towards Beacon Academy with Ozpin, the headmaster, which is just blinking a curse. Which, he goes, huh? He goes, I was trying to avoid that guy as much as possible. <sighs> this means he may be... He may come after me due to my semblance. He goes, Yeah, what's your semblance? He goes, It's called God Eater. As you already kind of already know, the entire claws and weapons that my hands are turned into, yeah, my semblance evolved. Drastically. As he just blinks, he goes, Okay. So, meanwhile, while I'm being paid and having a discussion with just. Junior's saying how about I, I mean, I'll only take, like, basically, probably not any grim attacks for a while since I don't want the Huntsman's after me. But yeah, Ozpin. He basically sent out, well, he basically had a video footage sent to him of someone. Someone basically fighting against the Nevermore that was on the way because of he would send out some security drones or whatever, which I think they have, to sensors basically as... I would say at least the head, like, three teachers are there. Just need to find those names. Give me a minute. Besides Glenn. So it's only two. But, yeah. Let me find the names real quick. Okay. So, Peter Port. And I think I got the name wrong. Or Part. Wait. Yeah, no, it's Peter Port. And then... Bo Bartholomew... Public history teacher. Peter Port was the grim teacher. Basically the guy with the mustache and such. So as the teacher says, fascinating. Fascinating indeed. How did he do that with his weapon? As Glenda says Doesn't he look a little bit well strange? As Honest Penny says, we do not get we could not basically get any footage clearly, but Something happened with him. Look, as Peter says, Ah, a mighty nevermore. But why does it wing look a little bit different? Like it's black and blue. Which Ozpin says, I do not know for cert well, certain, but whatever basically this boy did, that's, well, huntsman, in training or anything, but as, mm, excuse me, I had a burp coming on. As basically shows basically the weapon was a scythe, then all of a sudden, it basically changed basically its well stance as it was pointing downwards as the head pops out. As I'm basically, you know, just basically stabbing or thrusting it forward downwards, basically. As Kinda says, Do you think it was him? The vigilante? Everyone's calling him basically a phantom or something? Basically, Osman says, I do not know for, sh for sure, but <sighs> we missed the opportunity basically to see the whole entire fight. Or at least somewhat of it. We only saw footage, obviously, when they were in the air or, well, as close as we could have gone in. So, basically, all they have footage is basically of the final finishing move, not, not what happens to the Nevermore. But, they also only have footage of, well, me being stabbed by the Nevermore wings, well not wings, feathers, coming out of it. Then basically the whole entire basically attack, well the final attack. As, when basically they was, whatever sensor drone ever, that came around was able to get to, to clear where the Nevermore was, there was no more Nevermore. Everything was gone from it. Um, there was no basically loot there because I totally took the whole entire creature. Even though I did it one time with the loot, basically, yeah, it's random at times. Anyways. So, they just see a fox there and it starts, you know, walking strangely and then just starts running as the drone look for anything else. He goes, that's all we have. 
nothing else. Which Os what Ospin says as Bulick says well yeah, Bulick says, Hmm, I don't know basically what has happened but well what has happened to the individual boy, but it seems like basically the fox was heading back. No Oblick, not Bulick. Oblick basically says that. It's heading back to the city. This is quite strange, isn't that? As well Peter basically says, yes, it is. I don't understand how can the, well, how the fox know where the city is. As, basically, Glenda just sighs and says, it's all getting strange. Yes. Osmond says, yes, it is. But we must be focused. Not let anything basically get past our gaze. And try to help these individuals. So. Oh yeah, by the way, Ruby, Penny, and the whole entire team was helping out with a event that went on during the week. I forgot to mention that, but yeah. Which Osmond says, and besides, Team Ruby has, well, almost, well, has nearly finished their community service. I think it ended yesterday, though. Am I right, Linda? She would think about it, goes, yes. Besides, there's a little bit of a fair that happened today, well, yesterday, that they helped, helped clean up. In which, basically, last panel went on, he goes, anyways, we must find out who this individual is, as the rough picture of, well, I mean, the sketch picture of, basically, me is there. And make sure he's not on her side. Which, Linda would nod, and along with the other two teachers. As, that's where we're going to leave it off, everyone. Hope you guys have a nice day, night, wherever you are, and bye.